Hello, I'm Corey Ulrich and I am a program specialist with the Girl Scouts of Eastern Washington, North Idaho. And I would like to welcome you to our very first virtual journey. Um, we are going to be doing the So What journey for seniors and ambassadors who have not done it yet. Um, so we're gonna start with an overview of what this journey is about and slowly dig deeper into the concepts as you start asking questions to launch your take action project, which in this journey is cleverly called your harvest project. So that's exciting. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. What's this journey about? So the things that we're going to be learning about in this journey are, um, we're gonna be looking at food networks, basically anything that has to do with how food gets from a farm or wherever it comes from to your table. So we're gonna be looking at growing practices, um, as I said, the food network, the people who work around food, so the growers, the processors, the packaging, um, the truckers, the grocery store workers. Um, we're gonna be looking at the impact of that food network on the environment. We're gonna be looking at its impact on um, people and animals. And then we're also gonna take a look at other things that have to do with food, particularly hunger. How does hunger relate to this food network? And um, what does it look like globally and locally? So, a um, couple of housekeeping things. Um, before we start our first task, we are going to show you where everything is stored. So we have two places that things are stored. Um, one, you can join our Google Classroom, and our class code is K-Z-A-Q-A-Q-N. It's right there on the screen, so that's nice. Um, if you don't want to join our Google Classroom, that's okay. We do have a shared folder as well that will have all of the examples and places for you to upload your own files, and you can see other people's uploads as well, hopefully. So um, the link for that is, unfortunately, really long. So um, I will try to make that clickable later on. So the link for that is right there at the bottom of the screen. All right. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and practice using some of these things. And our first task is going to just get us thinking about where food might have come from. So you can do this activity on your own at home on a piece of paper. I would recommend getting out some art supplies, maybe markers and colored pencils if you are one of those artistic people. And if you're not and you're like me and you only draw stick figures, sometimes it's nice to have them more colorful. So that's exciting too. So um, you're going to need a, <clears throat> um, to, oops, you're going to need, <laughs> you're going to need to think of a food you ate for breakfast. You don't need to have it in your hand, but just keep thinking about what did you eat, um, pick food. And then, like I said, um, paper and art supplies, or you can go ahead and get into our Google Drive. I should take you here, and if it doesn't, please let us know. And again, you can find all of these materials in our Google Classroom as well. So if you did join our Google Classroom, it'll look more like this. You'll see our main screen, um, and you can go to classwork, it's all organized in week one, so what about so what? And we're gonna be doing the example timeline activity, so you can go ahead and click on that. <clears throat> in our Google Drive, you got here that way, you go to week one, examples, and it's right here, so you can also click there. Okay, so once you've found it, um, you are gonna go ahead and make your own. If you are doing this on paper at home, you already made your own, so good job. But if you aren't and you're gonna do online with us, you can go ahead and go to file and you're gonna to go to make a copy and that will make your own copy. Once you've made your copy, you can go ahead and change the word example, your first name, and then hopefully we'll be able to save this in the drive and you'll be able to see other people's. So what we're gonna do is make a timeline for this food that you chose that you ate for breakfast to describe its journey from creation to being consumed at your breakfast table or out this morning. Um, so this is the one I've already started. So I've got my table down here. And then um, before it was on my table, it was in my fridge. I had raspberries. And um, before it was in my fridge, it was in my car because I drove it from the store. So um, we're going to go ahead and you're going to grab a text box and you're just going to label what food you're doing so that everybody can see. And um, 
So the questions we just want to think about as we're working on this, we're working backwards, is where was the food before? So before it was in my car, I drove it from the store, so I can go ahead and put a picture of the grocery store in here. So this is the insert image box, and I just like to search the web directly from Google Drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and type in grocery store. And here is a cool picture. So you can just drag it on over. And then you can resize it if you need to, make it smaller. Sometimes it's too small. If you do run out of room, we can always make this document a little bit longer. So we can kind of resize how big everything is. Um, so you guys are going to just go ahead and keep working on this. You can also label it. So it was at the grocery store. Really, this is not going to be something that we needed to research. What we're really hoping for is that you're just kind of thinking about all of the steps and the people who are involved in those steps. So when it got to the grocery store, somebody had to take it out of a truck. Somebody had to unpack it. What kind of packaging was it in? So those are the kinds of things that we want you to be taking a look at here. And you can also reconnect it to your timeline by putting it in a line. Um, okay, so once you've figured out how it got on the shelf and in the store, thinking about where it came from before it and that, was it in a factory? Did it need to be packaged in a factory? Was it processed in a factory? Is it some sort of um, a combined thing where someone had to like cook it in the new microwave it and so someone had to kind of cook it for you and then package it. Um, and then for that, where did it come from? Um, and for me, for raspberries, I love to buy raspberries locally in the summer, but unfortunately right now they're not available. <laughs> and so mine are probably coming to me from California, Florida, or maybe even further south, like Mexico or Central America, or maybe even further. So um, if you are doing something like um, not just a simple food like raspberries, thinking about maybe even if it was bacon, thinking about if you do get back to where it was on a farm, um, how was it grown on that farm? So if it was raspberries, I need to think about like, did they use fertilizer? Did they use um, pesticides? Who are the workers who are growing it on the farm? Who's harvesting it on the farm? And if it was an animal, what kinds of foods did that animal eat? Um, where did those come from? So you can see that this timeline can get pretty complicated as you start thinking about everything. And then ultimately, we should get to a point where we're thinking about everything kind of needing the same basic ingredients. And those are gonna be kind of relating back to our environment. So plants are getting their energy from the sun. They're growing by using carbon dioxide in our air, and they need to be watered. So those are kind of the three main ingredients that we should see, hopefully, on everybody's timeline. But there might be other bumps and fun places went on the way. So when you're done, um, go ahead and make sure that this is in this correct folder for week one examples and shared files with your name. And we can go ahead and see how everybody is doing. Go ahead and open a couple others and see what, what their food was and where it came from. Shared files with your name. And we can go ahead and see how everybody is doing. Go ahead and open a couple others and see what what their food was and where it came from. And I'm going to take a break for a second. Okay, so that was just our first foray into thinking about where does our food come from and all of the different processes and elements that come into it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of move into more of a research mode. So um, we are going to do a bit more research and we're going to start with this concept of a food print. So this is our kind of big term for this journey, um, kind of encapsulates everything that we're going to be analyzing on the impact of food. So a food print is a general term for the impact your food has on the environment, animals, and people. It can include resources used in creating the food. So we were just talking about what kinds of pesticides or 
Um, fertilizer doesn't grow anything we need. What kind of food does an animal need to grow? Um, human resources, so what kind of people are growing and monitoring that food, who's harvesting it. Um, we're going to be taking a deep look into the pollution caused by transportation and processing of food. Um, we're going to take a look at packaging waste, um, the impact on ecosystems, and we're also going to take a really good look at the people who are involved in our food production. So how much are they getting paid? How do they maintain their health? Um, what kind of work do they have to do? We're also going to be keeping an eye out for animal health and wellness. So uh, making sure that all of the things that we do in our food network are still keeping everything as possible, healthy and clean. So to kind of introduce that idea a little bit better, we are going to go ahead and check out this video. Our food print is the collective impact that the food we eat has on animals, the environment and people. There are a lot of problems with our food system. This industrialized system has drastically increased our food print and favors the cheapest production practices while hiding the impacts to animals, public health, food workers, farmers, local economies, and the environment. Fortunately, not all of our food is plagued by these practices. But by the time the food hits the shelf, it's very hard to tell what's what. So, um, that is um, kind of a better look at how we can kind of start thinking about all the different choices that are made in the process of getting food to our table and how they can impact different areas. So we're going to take a look at this transportation and kind of environmental impact piece by looking at how far away our food comes and travels to get to us. So we are going to be um, taking a look at your favorite food or foods, because you're going to do three. And we're going to look at how geographically long that food chain system network is. So um, to do this, you're going to need access to um, our classroom again. And in our Google Classroom, we are going to take a look at the example spreadsheet. So it's right here. Um, and then if you're also in our drive, it's just called example four because I didn't finish um, labeling that. I should probably work on that. Example spreadsheet. And you can see that I've already started. My favorite food is tuna casserole. And uh, so I've gone ahead and put that in here. And um, so once you have kind of chosen a food, you're gonna break it down into ingredients. And we're not gonna try to like be 100% great about this as we could. Today, we're just kind of exploring this idea of geographic distance and thinking about if it came all the way from there, all of the different resources that had to go into getting that food to us. So um, we are just going to kind of basically pick the main ingredients. If you did choose something, like my next example will be Cool Ranch Doritos. Um, we're we're going to take a look at some of the ingredients in that food and put those here. But um, for tuna casserole, I'm, I'm assembling all of this in my kitchen. So I've chosen tuna, cream mushroom soup from Campbell's the can, um, milk, salt and wide egg noodles. And sometimes I do make it better than this, but um, this is just a simple example. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to really dig deep into where it's from, what country is it from? So um, I started by just kind of brainstorming where I think these things are from, but we're gonna get more specific. So when I am looking for tuna, I'm just gonna go to Google and I'm gonna say, where is tuna from? And it looks like there's all kinds of oceans that do tuna fishing. And um, where did your can of tuna come from? So if we look at this website, tuna are the jet setters of the ocean. They swim a lot, great, great, great. And it doesn't actually have an answer to my question and that's okay. So um, we can go back and look at a different website.
So if you look here, I found that um, Indonesia is the world's largest producer of tuna, producing a lot of tuna, 13%. So I'm gonna go ahead and put Indonesia in my chart here, instead of the ocean somewhere, Indonesia. And we're gonna be using a scale to rate how far that food came. So this is gonna be a really simplistic way to measure the geographic distance of our favorite foods and thinking about the further it travels the more impact it has on resources and people along its path so if it's from our region locally the pacific northwest then we can go ahead and put in a one if it's just from somewhere in the u.s that's also pretty good so we're going to put in two if it's from another country we're going to put in a three so indonesia is not the u.s so i'm going to put in a three and then cream of mushroom soup so that's a campbell's soup so where is campbell's soup made is a great Google search. And it looks like it's from New Jersey. So that's good to know. And so we're gonna go ahead and put New Jersey. New Jersey is in the US, so that gets a two. And then dairy farms. I usually get my milk from Dairy Gold Milk. And it looks like that might actually be pretty local. So it's from Idaho, Montana, Oregon, and Washington. So we're gonna go ahead and put the Pacific North. And our rating for that is a one, that's our region locally. Salt, I have um, Morton's salt. So I'm just gonna go ahead and look at that. And it's an American food company producing salt from Chicago. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in Illinois. And that is in the US, that's a two. And then our white egg noodles, um i guess i could go look at the package too if i'm not sure but i did get them from safeway let's see if we can find the factory mm -hmm. <laughs> nope i don't want to pick them up right Okay, so let's go ahead and just assume that these are also made in the United States for just the speed of this example. So we're gonna give that a two as well. Um, you guys are going to want to go ahead and make one row per um, favorite food. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these um, cells and I'm gonna click this merge cells button so that it makes one row. Same thing over here for the average. I'll go ahead and merge those cells. And then we could do all of this manually, but one cool thing about using a spreadsheet is that it does our calculation for us. So we can go ahead and click equals. And then we want to, it's an average, so we're going to add all of these numbers up and then divide by how many. So I can use the sum formula, which is going to return the sum, which is adding them all up. So I'm just going to highlight all of these. And it has to be in parentheses so it knows which numbers to start with and stop with. And so it's gonna add those up, and then I need to divide by the number of ingredients, one, two, three, four, five. And I should get an average of two, if that makes sense. You guys are gonna go ahead and change this to your first name again, and you can um, write example for geographic distance. I'm just gonna go and fill that down. Just ignore that. Oh. And then you are gonna go ahead and type in three of your own favorite foods and the ingredients, research where they're from, give it a reading and come up with an average. Again, we would like to share this with everybody so that we can um, see everybody's different, um, like how far our food is coming to us and what kinds of foods might be coming further away. So we're gonna look for some patterns in this data. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you do that and you can share it to our drive. Remember, you can use the internet. Um, we're just kind of doing some really basic research for right now, so it doesn't have to be super specific. And um, you can also make an educated guess if you're not able to come up with anything and you don't have the package label right in front of you. So once you've uploaded your um, spreadsheet and taken a look at some other people's, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to do a Padlet discussion. This is gonna be an online conversation with people who are also doing this journey. And you're gonna be able to add comments to all of these questions. So you can go ahead and click the link or you can also find us in 
Google Classroom. So if you go back to our Google Classroom Padlet discussion, scroll down and click that link. It should load this up. You do not need to log in to be able to comment. So you're gonna go ahead and take a look at at least two other people's, and then you're going to see what your ratings look like generally. So we're gonna look for some patterns and talk about how yours might compare to other people's. Then you're gonna look at individual items, which items have the highest ratings, um, and which items scored as a one, what kind of foods were those? And then how much of what we as a group are eating are coming from the Pacific Northwest or our own state of Washington or Idaho? And um, what kinds of foods are those? And how can we kind of increase that? Thinking about the advantages to the environment of eating food in our region. So coming up with a long brainstorm list. So not just saying, oh, it's healthier. Try to be really specific when you're answering these questions. And then are there advantages to people and families? And is there any advantage to us as the consumer of our food from eating more locally? So we're also gonna take a look at what do the things that this, like what did we miss? This is just looking at geography. So what are some other factors that might play in to um, the imprint of our food choices on the planet, the environment, and people? So this is where you can go ahead and comment. What I would like to see is everybody commenting at least once on every question and then also replying to someone else's comment, at least two other comments from other people to just kind of like encourage some cool discussion. So check back frequently to see if other people have replied to you and we'll try to keep this going for a little bit and just see what there is to see. Hey, guess what? You have homework. So um, if you want to type this big thing in, you totally can. But um, it's also in the classroom and on the drive shared folder. So you can go ahead and open food forage. I'm going to go ahead and open that now. Food forage worksheets. And you'll see that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, heading out to a grocery store. And now I know that we are in the middle of kind of a shelter in place, stay at home, order. And so this is ideally if you can go shopping with your family, um, making sure that you're very safe in that process. So maintaining social distancing, wiping down your cart, um, not talking to other people too closely, and really just keeping yourself safe. Safety is more important than this research. We can also do some of this online or just share memories of all of these things when we regroup in our next session. So um, what we're going to be looking for are uh, just kind of thinking about where do we go grocery shopping? Where do we get our food? So you can go to a regular grocery store. You can go to a convenience store. You can go to a really big um, store like Costco or Walmart or Target. You could um, go to a really small kind of Whole Foods, Trader Joe's sort of, um, or like an organic market, or um, you could go to a bakery or something like that. So anywhere that you can buy food is acceptable. And again, if you don't feel comfortable going out, see what you can find online, okay? So what we're gonna be looking at is, um, what are some of the foods that are for sale? Thinking about where do those foods come from and what would be their food print and food mileage? So thinking about that rating system we just developed, are these foods getting a one, a two, or a three? And looking at um, which vegetables and fruits might not have been so um, delicious looking, what kinds of labels they had, where are they from, and thinking about what food's missing. Now again, we have seen some panic shopping happening lately, so you can also look and see like what foods haven't been replenished yet and what foods are kind of most popular. We're also going to be taking a look at processed foods. So you're going to take a look at a cereal, a cookie, and a chip and look at how many are listing corn as an ingredient. So tell us what food did you look at and how many are listing corn or corn syrup and what ingredients are listed that you don't think are actually food. We're going to be looking um, for local food, fair trade food, and is any food labeled with where it's actually from. So kind of just thinking about that open communication about how are we going to make good choices about our food later on. And um, this chart we're going to fill out together next time. So once we have everybody's data, so just go ahead and look at one. Again, that's just kind of the supermarket. Farmers markets are kind of closed. Co-ops might be available, um, a bakery, that sort of thing. And I have to turn my head to the side. 
just doing your best with answering these questions. Okay, um, we are gonna all take a look at apples and just take a look at what the apple, what kind of apple, how much was it? Um, you don't have to buy it if you don't want to, but if you do, go ahead and taste it. Look at the label and think about where did it come from? What kind of food print did it have? We're gonna skip these. And this is optional. So remember, you should be social distancing, keeping six feet away. But if there is somebody who's working at the bakery or the grocery store, or if you want to talk to the checker as you're checking out, um, we're just kind of looking at um, what kinds of questions can we ask them about their job? So what are they, what kinds of foods are they working with? Um, are, do they recommend those foods? Um, some of the values, what should we try in the store? And if you were talking to a customer, again, six feet away, um, what kinds of things do they like to buy there? So that one's optional, you do not have to do it. And then this one we are gonna try to keep, so thinking about how our store is trying to impact our food purchasing decisions. So looking at advertisement, convenience, how accessible the food is, and um, some other important questions. So that's gonna be our homework for next time. So go ahead and find this on our drive or in our classroom. and you can um, complete it. All right, so if you do have any questions on the Alamar, go ahead and let me know and I will try to answer them. And again, if you can't make it work, go ahead and find something online and you can look at Safeway online, Costco online, Walmart online, and just try to look at what foods are available to purchase online and look at some of the ingredients there. Or if you have food at home, you can go ahead and look at ingredients there, thinking about corn and looking at receipts from last time you went out shopping. So we're just going to be really creative with this food forage since it's really hard to go outside right now. Um, so uh, to recap what we did today, we looked at this term of a food print that we're going to be kind of using throughout and how that kind of encapsulates, encapsulates, encapsulates the impact of our food choices on people and the environment. We took a look at our favorite foods and how far those foods travel to get to our table. We looked at how food production involves a large network of people and resources, including truck drivers, food harvesting, growers, um, factory workers, um, grocery store employees, um, you know, even the gas people at the gas station because I have to get gas for my car. So all of these different resources are coming into bringing food to our tables. And so food has a lot bigger web than we kind of think it does when we just think, oh, store to table. And that's kind of the point of this journey is we're going to be looking at how do all of those different things impact the lives of others and our own health and wellness as well as the environment and how can we make it better. So um, we are going to go to my face. And um, I want you guys to be thinking about these three things as we move forward with this journey and thinking about which ones kind of resonate the most as you're thinking about selecting a take action project. So is the right that everyone has on earth to a good, healthy, and affordable food the one thing that you're really passionate about? Is it the importance of producing food through practices that protect the planet? Or is it acceptable work conditions and fair pay for those who work on our farms, in our fields, and in our market? So, um, making sure that you're kind of monitoring that as we go so that you have some ideas of what might be a good take action project when we're done with this journey. And, um, Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your participation. And again, we are just doing our best to kind of make this work. So any tips you have on how to make this better, we'd love to hear them. So we'll see you next Friday on our uh, next week session of So What? And hopefully you remember to go out and forage for food or stay in and forage for food. But um, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.